We're going to be looking at alloys. Let's define an alloy first of all. An alloy is a mixture of two or more metals. In some cases, um, it can be a mixture of a metal with a small amount of a non-metal. So, let's think about some examples. Uh, brass is an example of an alloy. Brass is a mixture of copper and zinc, about 60-40 uh, mixture. Bronze, uh, which is a mixture of copper and tin. Solder, which is a mixture of tin and lead. Steel, which is a mixture of iron and carbon. So here's our example of uh, a situation where we've got a metal and a very small amount of carbon, depending on the steel, uh, less than 1% um, ca uh, carbon. And then another example is stainless steel, which again is mainly iron, but also chromium and nickel, which are all metals. So let's think about their properties, because alloys have uh, different properties to um, uh, metals, to pure metals. A really good example of this is gold. So here's a bar of gold, uh, which we're going to give the symbol AU. Now, in gold, the metal ions, or we can, can say metal atoms, but the particles are arranged in very ordered layers. So it's a very regularly ordered structure. And because of the nature of the bonding in the structure, which is um, electro, uh, positive metal ions in a sea of delocalized electrons, the layers are able to slide over each other. Now, as a result of the layers being able to slide over each other, the metals are malleable. They are sometimes a little bit softer than we would expect. They are ductile, which means we can draw them into shapes, uh, draw them into wires. Um, and there is also usually some flexibility there as well. So that's as a result of having this um, structure, um, the, our pure metals have um, these properties. Now, if we think about a gold alloy, and an example, I'm, just gonna, I'm trying to draw um, a ring here. So, um, now a gold ring is not made out of pure gold. We wouldn't want to use pure gold to make a ring because particularly it's quite soft and flexible um, if it was pure gold. So we use an alloy, which is mainly gold, but it is a mixture of copper and gold. Now the structure is quite different. Because copper and gold atoms are different sizes, we don't have this regular structure anymore. What we have is different sized atoms or ions that disrupt this structure. So now we've got different sized atoms or ions. As a result of that, the layers cannot slide. If they can't slide over each other, the um, alloy is less flexible and it's usually harder than the pure metal. There are some exceptions, but it's usually harder than the pure metal. So if we just have a look at both of these together, pure metal, such as gold, the particles are arranged in layers which can slide over each other. That gives these properties to the pure metal. A alloy such as copper, a copper and gold alloy has different sized atoms, which means the layers are no longer able to slide over each other, which means the alloy is less flexible and harder. So just to finish on the point, that often pure metals are too soft to be used. 
almost all alloys, or almost all metals that we use are alloys. And we can change the uh, composition or the things that make up the alloy in order for us to be able to have different properties. So we saw, for example, earlier, steel is an example of an alloy of carbon, uh, iron with a small amount of carbon that is or rusts easily. If we have stainless steel, which we use for things like cutlery, which has got iron, nickel and chromium in it, then this is corrosion resistant. So because we've changed the structure uh, of the alloy, we've changed its properties. Thank you very much.